Hello and welcome to Gayton Marina in Northamptonshire. Like many, if indeed not most marinas, they have a hire fleet here. Boats that you can rent for a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, and go chugging off round the canal network at your leisure. And incredibly, you need no licence and no formal training to do this. Now there is of course a handover. The hire companies show you everything in the boat and go over some basic canal etiquette and how to handle it. But what is it actually like if you are a novice boater hiring for the very first time? Well, that's what I've come along here today to find out. And the people who've hired a boat for the week are friends of mine and fellow YouTubers. One's self-build campervan legend Greg Virgo and his wife Lou. The others are John, Mandy and Dog Cooper, who live in their motorhome full time. Greg and Lou told me why they decided to try narrowboating. This is something no. we've never done before. This is our so first time. It was something that we thought, well, we can't travel into Europe at the moment. So we were looking at something, what can we do that's interesting and, and different? Um, so yeah, we thought, yeah. well, let's try a narrowboat. We've never done it before. No. I know John and Mandy, who we're with, have never done it before either. So it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. But I noticed some similarities, because obviously we live off grid and being on a narrowboat is, is off grid as well. So some things are going to, be second nature but actually just driving the boat itself is what's probably scaring us the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Greg's van. He documented the entire build on his channel. Sitting area at the front, shower and toilet behind with a bed across the back and kitchen to the side. And this is John and Mandy's motorhome, a 2015 van, seven metres long, built on a Fiat Ducato chassis with a 2.3 litre turbo diesel engine, and they've been everywhere in it. Oh, and here's their dog, Cooper. They told me what they're most worried about. I guess the uh, navigation system and steering of the boat, because it's entirely different than anything we've ever done before. Just this concept of however long it is, 50, 60 feet, pivots in the middle, everything's slightly delayed. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> and I'm bothered about whether the right, there's the right kitchen equipment so I can cook properly. Yeah. <laughs> it is all the different things, isn't yeah. it? But I'm just really excited, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, it'd be really good. When, when um, we talk about how many locks we've got and all the aqueducts and stuff, I just can't wait to see it all. It should be, uh, it should be yeah. really good. Here's the boat they've hired. 66 feet long, 6 feet 10 inches wide laid out with two bedrooms and two bathrooms, as hire boats often are. A big cruiser stern is normal for hire boats, being a good social area for drinks and meals, morning, noon and night, and this is the view from the steering position at the back. Engine dials are easy to see next to the back door, and looking through that door you find the main living area with a dinette. Electrical fuses are to the left as you step in, on the other side is a hanging locker for coats. Here's that combined saloon and dinette again, space for six people at a push with the help of this fold-down seating on the far side. A welcome note gives hirers useful info and telephone numbers and, crucially, there are tea supplies. The next section is the galley. Compact but big enough to cook a meal, you've got a cooker with grill and four-burner hob all running on propane. There's an electric toaster, microwave, and a small fridge. A little pack of kitchen knickknacks was also left for our intrepid crew, along with canal-themed mugs and lots of pots and pans, plates and so on under the sink. The first of the two bathrooms has a toilet with a holding tank, sink, heated towel rail, and a small but usable shower. Bedroom one was laid out as a compact double, which can be extended width-wise to make it slightly more accommodating for two. The second bathroom is largely a duplicate of the first, so effectively each bedroom has an ensuite. The second bedroom was set up with two singles, which could also be extended for better width. At the marina office, the staff needed to give the hirers their handover, which I've never seen before, having never hired myself, but it was surprisingly comprehensive, I thought, especially given that anyone hiring will just be keen to load up their stuff and go. But there was a lot of info to get through, from boring admin to do with the hire, to route planning and safety. Life jackets are not compulsory on narrowboats. In fact, most folk don't bother, but kids absolutely should be wearing one. 
Next up, a presentation in a tent outside about a crucial aspect of narrowboating, what locks are and how to operate them safely. For this, they have a rather amusing little wooden model with opening lock gates and fake water to show you how to fill, empty, enter and exit a lock without coming to grief. And that can happen if you're not careful. So, without wishing to scare the group too much, they were nonetheless shown pictures of what can go wrong, ending up with the boat half under the water. So, this is good. All of this and the briefing had only just started, as now we made our way to the boat for a thorough chat about everything, literally from one end of the boat to the other. The group was shown how to tie the boat. Just loop that over like that and continue the loop. That will not come under. Where the gas locker was and some notes about gas safety how to refill the water tank, which they were advised to do daily. They were shown windlasses for the lock, nappy pins for mooring, and fenders. Then they went inside for a demo of how to extend the beds, how to operate the loo and what not to put down it. All the kitchen appliances were discussed, along with a chat about battery power, because of course, Everything electrical on the boat has to run off batteries on board. There's not really any scope to plug into the mains when you moor along the canals. And by the way, yes, the boat does have a fire alarm and carbon monoxide detector. Finally, they were shown the bit everyone really wants to know about, how to make the boat go, and ideally, in the direction you want it to. That included such vital notes as how to use the horn and lights, how to use the throttle control. Now, the propeller's going now. How to attach and dismantle the tiller arm. And why the stern gland needs a good daily greasing. Plus, the bit no one looks forward to, plunging your arm into the weed hatch if you ever get rubbish wrapped around the propeller. The final part of the handover is a short run up the canal and back. Not far, but just enough to show how to steer and let everyone who wants to have a go. So John went to the bow to untie the ropes holding the boat to the dock there. And after they dropped me off on the towpath side, off the boat went, with John taking first go on the tiller. He was doing very well. The boat easily kept on course. But a slightly more challenging section lay ahead with moored boats, a sharp line corner typical of the canals and a bridge hole to squeeze through. John was looking masterful, until, relieved by having done it right, he oversteered and pointed the boat into the bushes, prompting a frantic overcorrection the other way, until eventually the veering side to side was under control. This is entirely normal for first time narrowboaters. I asked the wives at the bow for their verdict. Well, he nearly put me in a bush. Yeah, but other than that, apart from that, we're all good. Yeah. There's a handy turning point just down from the marina, so it's here the boat reverses direction and heads back. The challenge for John at the helm was to point the bow into the furthest edge of the space, then push the back around. Is this the done thing? Preferably without hitting it. But the boat and the bank are very solid, so no harm done. And now it's just a case of tiller hard left, revs high, and the back moves around. Eventually, after a bit of back and forward, the boat will be pointing in the other direction. 
For the return journey, it was Greg's turn at the tiller, speeding off like a maniac and coming very close to taking the boat into the bank. He missed it and was soon looking calmly in control. But would he make it under the bridge, past the moored boats and round the sharp bend? For a moment, I thought a prang was on the cards, but a last-minute course correction had the narrowboat skim the edge by the skin of its teeth. Seriously, though, both chaps took to this pretty quickly, and I was certain they'd be fine if they could perhaps just slow down a tad. Neither of the ladies was particularly keen on having a go at steering. Quite clearly, you can spend a day, two days even, learning how to control a narrowboat fully, and that's what the RYA Helmsman courses are for. When you're hiring one, it's a quick zip up the canal and back just to check that you've got the general gist of it, and for most people, actually, that's perfectly fine. Greg steered the boat gently onto the dock, and while the instructor held it by the centre line, tried his first go at mooring up. The trickiest part is um, learning how quickly the boat or slowly the boat reacts, or in, in our case at some point, overreacting and overcompensating. Um, so I think as long as we get the hang of that, we'll be pretty good, I reckon. Excessively difficult to keep the concentration. So I noticed as soon as the girls went to the front of the boat, I started to look at them and then I lost my pivot point in the middle and then things started to get a bit twitchy, so I need to concentrate. Lovely. We were now all set to go, so John set up his filming gear at the bow, Greg was ready to vlog at the back, the bow line was untied, ditto for the stern, and we were off. The chaps looked like giddy schoolboys with a new toy, but the concentration was fierce as we immediately went past moored boats, for which the rule is to slow down to tick over. By the way, they're all looking at Oh yeah, he's new. <laughs> the first bridge hole was navigated without so much as a scrape. But Cooper the dog seemed unimpressed. I see no ships but hardships. <laughs> you understand that is the naffest thing in the world for a hire verger to wear. <laughs> we, well, you've we, not seen the best of it. Yeah, you haven't, you haven't seen the pirates outfit yet. <laughs> yeah, I think the voiceover now. Oh, Things yeah. got rapidly worse. <laughs> That's the first time you've had long hair in how many years? 30. <laughs> Thankfully, the silly hats came off swiftly, and we settled into some lovely cruising north up the Grand Union Canal heading towards Weedon. <laughs> Is this, would this be your sort of cruising speed? Yeah. Although sometimes the gents did still seem to think we were on a speedboat. Slow down for the moored boats. Time for John to have a go. Right, so oh, this is it. Am I going that way to go left or right? No. The veer off course was caught in time, no doubt to the relief of this boat. No pressure, okay. no, more no pressure. pressure. And the throttle was hammered again. We could have towed a water skier at this rate. But my repeated shrieks to slow down eventually stuck, and no boats were disturbed by our progress. Shortly after Stowe Hill Wharf, where Broker Rugby Boats is based, the crew moored for the night, and I checked how they were all feeling. It started off a little bit as nerve-wracking, because obviously the length of the boat, and we had a couple of moments where we were overcompensated, but 
first day we didn't hit anything so i think that's a success <laughs> yeah no it's brilliant really good once you've got the hang of it it's very intuitive then you've got to kind of like turn in early um so no i really enjoyed it it was great really slow pace of life though isn't it i think when we get in the van it's going to feel like i'm racing on a racetrack it's the the point where you get the confidence and the turns and with the speed comes more confidence and the speed gives you greater control as well so but ultimately i feel ultimately confident that we're going to be able to tackle everything apart from the locks yeah it was quite smooth actually yeah yeah really quite smooth i was, I was um Surprise. Yes. Hand on heart, were you expecting your partner slash husbands or whatever to crash? Yes. They did. They did not <laughs> tell you about the one crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did expect to go in a few bushes, but no, I think they did. They both did really well. Yeah. It's, it's unusual compared to going in the van where you can actually mill about and make a brew and do all the yeah, things you normally yeah. do while it's you're It's nice to be moving, able to walk so... up and down still while we're on the move. Yeah. Not used to that. The next morning, I came back to help the hirers through their first locks, which would be the flight of seven at Buckby. Breakfast was being served, and even the dog had begun to relax into it. Morning, gents. How did we sleep? Morning, Morning. David. Yeah, very well, thank you. The mattress was super comfortable. That was really nice. So, yeah, we slept really well. The uh, it was well, rain during the night, really. Uh, Early hours of the morning, yeah. yeah, it really chucked it down, and obviously we could hear that on the roof. And uh, yeah, the cows woke us up this morning. A little really? bit dawn chorus. Yeah. I was intrigued. Followed by the five thirty to London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the train line. But yeah. no, all in all, yeah, really, really good night's sleep yep. actually. Now you've got to do locks today. Are you mm. feeling confident? I think we've got the theory, but it's just yeah. the practice might be a bit different. <laughs> we know what's well, ultra cautious. I think will be yeah, the approach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can take, take it easy and uh, try not to crash into anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're looking forward to it. Time to cast off the mooring lines once more, but with the engine off because the hire firm had advised refilling the water tank daily, and as luck would have it, our intrepid team had moored just along from a water point, so they just bow hauled the boat a few yards to the tap. Anyone will do, I guess. Okay, she's on. Let's go. Half an hour later, and warp speed was engaged once again. The captain did slow down as we came into Weedon, and the rules were faithfully observed as we passed moored craft. John recorded part of the trip in 360 degree video. Do make sure you watch his and Greg's channels for their excellent accounts of the full week-long holiday. This is the life. We approached Buckby Locks and Lou steered the boat expertly onto the lock landing. Greg looped the centre line round a bollard and we all went up to set the first lock. One of the top gates was wide open, so Greg and Mandy first went to close that, otherwise they'd not be able to empty the lock. Then Lou and Mandy tackled the rather stiff paddle gear. Not all locks are this bad, but some can really be hard work. With the water out, the bottom gates were opened. The paddles were closed. And John drove the boat into the lock, handing Greg a centre line to help control it once the water started flooding in. 
Yes. Lower gates closed. Again, quite the effort on these locks. And the top ground paddles were gently opened, just a bit to start, so as not to throw the boat around in the initial rush of water. Once the lock was half full, Lou and Mandy opened the gate paddles too. Eventually the lock was full and the top gates could be swung open. There were two boats waiting to come down so we didn't need to shut them after leaving and they left the gates of the next lock open for us. Here I departed and Greg, Lou, Mandy, John and Cooper continued their holiday, turning right at Norton Junction and all the way to Foxton before returning. It was a good sign that the boat was safely back on the mooring, still floating. Time for a debrief. Absolutely, oh, brilliant. absolutely brilliant. Really brilliant. Good. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Really, really good. good. Completely different experience, but thoroughly enjoyed it, to be honest. Yeah. And I think after the first couple of days, we were a little bit nervous because it's all brand new and uh, didn't really know how the boat was going to control and etc. But once we got into the groove of it, it was it really enjoyable. We could relax a bit more, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was definitely good. Yeah. We, fi we figured out that you do need water in the boat for ballast. That, that yes. does make a difference yeah, to how you steer it. Yeah. <laughs> and we've learned along the way so many little things, but even things like the different kinds of sterns for the boats, and we're now a bit nerdy about it all. <laughs> so it's just that we've just picked it up all. all. You've been losing all the, uh, what are they call the cheese curls for the boat. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. You, you, you can cheese your ropes when you make them into the circle. <laughs> so as soon as we're done, we've had everything absolutely just so. A bit of a competition front and back for me and Greg. <laughs> what, what was our stern? Was it a chad or a yep. trad? I don't know, ours is a tried, I was a cruiser oh, stay. Yeah. That was it now. Almost <laughs> experts. Been there, read the t-shirt, bought the t-shirt, sorry, read the book. Read the website that told me all about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and any um, any highlights or low low lights of the trip? I think low lights are probably the when the guy rammed us in the middle of the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. And and our only, only major incident. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't anything to do. No. No. With us. We couldn't. We so, couldn't yeah. have gone any further into that wall than we no. were than no. we were over there. But highlights is just the, the whole, scenery. The whole and week, yeah. yeah, it is literally yeah. the whole thing. Oh, I have yeah. doing the locks. It was tough work to be fair to start with, but after go up, go down. Yeah, got the hang of oh, it. I rather enjoyed that. But actually, it was both, good both piloting the boat or driving the boat, whatever yeah. you say, and doing the lock bits. So. Yeah. I think one of the nicest things was. Everybody we met, whether they was on a boat or whether they were just walking on the canal path, everybody said hello to yeah. you. Yeah. Everybody was super friendly. Even the yeah. runners going past, yeah. everyone was yeah. so friendly. Really, really, yeah. We yeah. met really some friendly. really great people. I've never had so much fun learning so much stuff yeah. on, on a holiday before. It has been it has been really good. I think we all agreed it's been really busy. Yeah. You know, we've not the concentration, stopped. we've not stopped. We've been pretty much exhausted at the end of each day, but it's been really fun at the okay. same time. Yeah, exhaustion, yeah, at the end of the day. Probably the earliest that we've ever been to bed each yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah. about 10 o'clock, we're all like, yeah, let's go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're shattered. There was, one, there was one night we had to wait. We were counting yeah. the minutes down to it. We were like, we're not going to bed before 10 o'clock, so we've got to wait until until 10 o'clock to do it. But you said you'd never see Greg sleep so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anna. And the amount of afternoon naps that we've put in. One or two afternoon naps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with all of us. Yeah. I think le learning can be a bit e exhausting, can't yeah. it? But good stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good oh stuff. yeah, definitely.